In the South Pacific, there is a unit with the capacity to change the course of some countries. Recognized as one of the most effective military units in the world, the SASR has the capacity to influence complex geopolitical scenarios. With rigorous training and state-of-the-art equipment, these highly specialized soldiers have participated in crucial operations in various global conflicts. In the long-range reconnaissance role, the SASR normally operates in small patrols of five to six operators with the task of infiltrating enemy-controlled territory and providing intelligence on enemy activities and capabilities. During these tasks, the SASR seeks to avoid confrontation with the enemy. SASR soldiers also direct fire support, including airstrikes, to destroy enemy installations and disrupt or kill enemy forces whenever possible. SASR reconnaissance patrols can be inserted by air, by helicopter, parachute or high-altitude parachute, land, on foot or by vehicle, or water, including by submarine, small boats, kayaks or scuba diving, and have proven capable of covering long distances and remaining hidden in jungle, desert, and mountainous terrain. SASR patrols can also conduct sabotage and short-term attacks on high-value targets, including headquarters, airfields, communication nodes, counterterrorism, with a SASR element designated as Tactical Assault Group, West, to respond to domestic incidents on the west coast of Australia and also for international operations. The regiment is believed to be organized as follows. Regimental Headquarters, 1st Squadron, 2nd Squadron, 3rd Squadron, 4th Squadron, Specialized Support Squadron, Operational Support Squadron, 152nd Signal Squadron. Each Sabre Squadron has approximately 90 men and is divided into three troops, Water Troop, Free Fall Troop, and Vehicle Mounted Troop. A troop comprises four patrols with five or six operators on each patrol, and is commanded by a captain, with each patrol commanded by a sergeant. For surveillance operations, the SASR generally operates in patrols. However, for CT operations, it generally employs larger force elements. Support personnel include signalmen, mechanics and technicians, medical staff, storekeepers, drivers, suppliers and various specialists. It was reported in 2012 that six female soldiers were being trained in the United States. As of 2003, the 152nd Signal Squadron consisted of four troops. Military Dogs, designated Special Operations Military Working Dogs, SOMWD, have been members of the SASR since 2005, serving in Afghanistan, and have their own memorial. The SASR first saw action in 1965 as part of the Commonwealth force stationed in northern Borneo during the Indonesia-Malaysia confrontation. SASR soldiers operated alongside their British and New Zealand counterparts in operations designed to prevent Indonesian infiltration into Malaysia, taking part in Operation Claret. The 1st Squadron conducted reconnaissance patrols in Sarawak from February to July 1965 and cross-border operations between May and July. They suffered their first fatality on June 2nd, when a soldier was gored by an elephant. The 1st Squadron concluded operations on August 1st and returned to Australia. The 2nd Squadron arrived in Borneo in January 1966 for a four-month deployment and, despite the suspension of Claret operations, also conducted reconnaissance patrols and cross-border operations carrying out a total of 45 patrols on both sides of the border. On March 19, two soldiers drowned while crossing a river. On July 21, the second squadron was replaced by a British SAS squadron and returned to Australia in August. Despite often being deployed in a reconnaissance role, the SASR killed at least 20 Indonesian soldiers in a series of ambushes and contacts. Three SASR soldiers were killed. These operations took place mainly in secret and were never admitted to during the war. The Australian Special Operations Regiment SASR, was not initially sent to Vietnam due to the withdrawal of advisors in South Vietnam in 1963 and the commitment of ground forces in 1965. However, 
political pressure led to a change in government policy in 1966, and an SAS ship was announced for deployment. The SASR arrived in Vietnam in April 1966 and began operations as part of the 1st Australian Task Force, 1 ATF, in Phuc Thuy Province. They operated in small groups of four to six men, moving slowly through jungle or bush and using a high rate of fire to simulate a larger force in contact. The SASR served in Vietnam for six years, conducting various operations, including long-range reconnaissance, direct action, sabotage and interdiction of enemy supply routes. The regiment was highly effective in Vietnam and received the United States Unit Citation for Gallantry for its actions during the 1968 Tet Offensive. The SASR left Vietnam in 1971, having played a significant role in the Australian war effort. Although the SASR is a regular army unit, it also has a group of army reservists. These soldiers are former regular army members of the SASR or specialists. Following the publication of the Brereton Report on War Crimes in Afghanistan, the Chief of the Defense Force, General Angus Campbell, announced in 2020 that the 2nd Squadron would be removed from the Army's order of battle due to its association with war crimes, and that in time, the regiment would re-establish a squadron with a different title. The squadron's decommissioning ceremony scheduled to take place in September 2021 was cancelled by the then Minister of Defense, Peter Dutton. The SASR is a highly demanding entry test for the Australian Defence Force, requiring members to work in small teams for long periods without support. The selection process involves completing the Special Forces Selection Test at the Special Forces Training Centre, which tests physical fitness and interviews. Successful candidates undergo a 21-day SAS selection course, which assesses individual strength, endurance, and combat capability. The course consists of four phases, with 10 to 30 percent passing the selection. Candidates then progress to a 16-month refresher cycle, which includes courses in weapons, basic patrolling, parachuting, combat survival, heavy weapons, demolitions, entry method and urban combat. Officers must complete additional courses to qualify as officers. Most candidates are just over 20 years old and generally older than most soldiers. The Special Operations Command Review Report recommended a joint selection course for the SASR and the 2nd Commando Regiment. SASR personnel also provide weapons handling training for ASIS officers. The SASR maintains close ties with special forces in the United States, the United Kingdom, New Zealand and Canada, regularly participating in joint exercises and individual personnel exchange programs with the British Special Air Service and Special Boat Service, Canada's Joint Task Force II, New Zealand's Special Air Service, and the U.S. Navy SEALs, SEAL Team 6, U.S. Army Special Forces, and Delta Force. The regiment also regularly conducts exercises with and trains soldiers from Southeast Asian nations and participates in exercises with regional special forces. Since 1992, this has included close ties with the Indonesian Kopassus, a relationship that has sometimes been politically controversial. Since its formation, the SASR has lost more men in training than in combat due to the nature of the training regime. In 2014, the regiment celebrated its 50th anniversary. During this period, 48 soldiers were killed during operations or in training accidents, while another 20 died in other circumstances. More than 200 were wounded. The names of the dead are recorded on a plaque on a memorial made from a large piece of granite outside the SASR headquarters in Campbell Barracks, known as The Rock.